All right. We have a bunch of uh, LEC bangers that I get to watch before Summoning Insight tonight. You get to enjoy them with me alongside my mukbang stream. It's going to look weird because I have a green screen, but I made myself a uh, burrito bowl with some marinated chipotle chicken breasts and some fire roasted salsa that I made. A little gochujang in there. It's delicious. 10x better than Chipotle the restaurant. So good. I'm here for more KC murder. Yeah, they deserve it. Piece of shit team. Shitty ass owner. Firing good coaches. When he should be firing his mid laner. Guys, do the Carmine Corp fans get tired of losing? Like, at what point do they actually turn on Kometo for real? Like, why are they out defending him while he makes shitty rosters and then keeps running with them? Why why do they do that? I don't understand. Is LEC worse than NA right now? Uh, maybe the middle of the pack is. But G2 and Fnatic are way better than any NA teams. What did I cook? Um, I made a burrito bowl. So what I did was I took some chicken breasts and I married them, marinated them in a blender. I put olive oil. Lime juice, little sugar, garlic, uh, chipotle in adobo sauce. What else was in there? Cumin, salt, and I grind it. I I blended it and then put it in a bag with a bunch of chicken breasts, and then I air fried those chicken breasts. And there's rice and lettuce and Mexican blend shredded cheese and uh, avocados and like I crumpled up a bunch of tortilla chips, so it's like a little crunchy. Um, and then I made fire roasted salsa with gochujang. So in a grill pan, I grilled a bunch of tomatoes and onions and garlic. And then I blended that up with cilantro and lime juice. And I made salsa. And it is delicious. It is delicious. Way more delicious than these LEC games we're about to watch. New thing of gochujang? Yeah, gochujang pico de gallo is also really good. If you just cube a bunch of, you know, dice a bunch of uh, tomatoes and, and purple onions, red onions, and sabatini. Yo, man, happy to see you. Are you happy to see me covering LEC, sabatini? These games are shit. Are, is anybody happy about this? <laughs> Arielle, uh, subscribe with tier one. Is it time to feed us? Yes, it is. Raccoon feeding frenzy. I'm not the only one who suffer. Well, you're French, so you always suffer. Even when you do well, you suffer. There isn't any end to your suffering. That's the French condition. 
But a French guy saying, I'm not the only one who suffers, you know, suffering together is also a French thing. Okay, I guess we're just first picking Vi for Yankos, and um, we're giving up Varus for it. Intriguing. Oh, we needed that Zeri. We needed to play that Zeri into the Varus. Yep. Yep. Okay, we're blinding the Annie, but they're just going to pick Karma. So we're going to... We get to ban Jace? What, they just didn't ban anything? Wait, what? Oh, they, they lost a ban for arriving late at the studio? Okay. Nautilus somehow survives to the second round. Okay, I already hate Giant X's composition. Yeah, you have to ban the Jace here. If you're banning the Twisted Fate, like, of course they're just going to play Jace. So, like, what was the point of banning the TF if you knew you didn't have an extra ban and you couldn't ban the Jace? Because now you just blind pick Rek'Sai into a ranged matchup, which is what you're trying to avoid by banning TF. This is a big question, Marcarino. Just don't ban TF, ban something else. I mean, this composition is like a poke comp, but with like this weird karma that I guess is there for speed boosts and shields on kiting. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I kind of hate both of these compositions. Like, I guess you can create picks here, but what does that do, really? Like, you have a lot of single target threat with Rek'Sai, Vi, and Annie, but you kind of want front-to-back team fighting with Ari. Or with uh, Zeri, rather. So, why are we doing this? You actually don't have very good peel for Zeri here. Not that you'll need it. But you also don't have very much tankiness for poke. I guess you kind of do. with You can heal with Rek'Sai, but you have to be able to charge Fury on Rek'Sai in order to heal. So, it feels pretty weird. It was Odo Amne's Jace that was so terrifying to play against up towards the top side of the map. So, excited to see him back on the champion. Hilly got criticized today by casters in both French and English broadcasts while actually being the only player contesting space in the game was heartbreaking. Oh, well, we'll watch it later. Heretic's very reliant on closing members of Heretic's before the fight starts. And can they disengage if the engage does come out from Heretic's, right? Can they use the Karma and the Rail to just distract Heretic's for long enough to step back, use that chain of corruption and make sure you are a little bit safer just to get that poke in? Uh, Odo Amne's last win on Jace in the LEC was in Spring Playoffs 2022, Vedius. So a full two years ago. He did only play it twice since then. Uh, once against G2 on Rogue and once on XL against G2 as well. So he doesn't win against G2, but he did win against Fnatic the last time that he... Uh, but with our production yeah. team and everyone working today, I was expecting a few more delays, but we're able to jump straight into game after the draft. So, you're looking at the runes and masteries on your screens right now. Nothing too surprising. There's that grasp Rek'Sai that you were talking about, the tank Rek'Sai. It's crazy to me that um, the way I learned about this was someone just linked me a YouTube video. Was it Lol Dobby? It was, it was low dobby. Yeah. yeah. That's how everyone learns about everything. <laughs> it's how, like, BB learns about it. It's, it's how every European and uh, American player learns what they should be one-tricking. Because <laughs> all he does is he takes the best LCK, uh, um, Korean challenger accounts that are playing wan random stuff and puts out a YouTube video about it. And everyone's like, oh, my God. But the Rex I top with grass? The, the we can do this? The funniest thing about it was the video starts with, this was a Diamond 4 top lane main mm -hmm. that went to Masters 400 LP yep. in, like, a week. And, then, and, so, and it's not even like, like this is uh, Keen on his Smurf account. Nope. You know, it's just, <laughs> this is just some guy. He was just winning Rex a lot of games. <laughs> and apparently this champion has a really good win rate. And this is what he does. And all the pros are like, hmm. I will uh, give that a go. Yeah, it does look it does look good. Random person who found this interesting build. You may have made other top laners lives miserable because I've heard there's people calling this this is like Cassante when he was broke. It's just the healing and the safety. It's the, yeah, it's the safety that's really annoying I think about this top lane Renekton. It's crazy and and 
we we had Dag to talking about it the first day it arrived, but if you are new to the champion, basically what happens is you walk up, you you unburrow, yep. you hit them once or twice, you see that yep. little meter that's building up underneath the bar, and then you go underground and look. How much health did he get back there? I, I, I need to go have a closer look at that, but like, it's just so much passive sustain. Look, 28, 36. Yeah, and the heal it is dependent on your level and it's percent match, max HP. So by the time you hit level 16, you're healing for 20% of your match, max HP, which then when you have like spirit visage is even more. So you can heal like a thousand HP in three seconds every time your meter is full, which is very annoying. Prince Frerin, want to say I've been really enjoying the videos and the streams. You're welcome for the content. Thank you for the not kind words. We'll see how this matchup goes, and if Rek'Sai, this top lane Rek'Sai build, is actually slowed down by top range top laners as they get more levels and items. Going back after six camps for Vi, then coming back up, taking top scuttle. Pretty boring. The executioner's calling did actually do work the last time we watched this matchup yesterday. We saw it on the Aatrox first. The tunnel cooldown is quite long this early in the game. So we'll see. That positioning might be a little bit wacky. Oh, actually, he is going for all three grubs, I guess, because you have the pressure on the top side. We did talk about it. There's a bit of a range difference in the mid matchup, and Annie doesn't have the greatest wave clear, so she kind of gets bullied by Karma in the laning phase. And uh, unless the Karma oversteps, there's not really much you can do about it. But at the cost of his Raptors, he will be able to secure those early grubs. Does potentially unlock the Dragon. You've got to be a little bit cautious about trying to force that because while Yankos has only just cleared them, Dwyro miss cannon. Rip. There is a possibility. All right, reset here from Vi. As you say, with Jackie's always being able to gain mid prior whenever he wants it, the tippers can be used to try and negate that. Jackie's goes back in. Focus resolve with the mantra applied. Well, he eliminates. Oh! No flash burn from Jackie's. Ignor's going to keep Trimby. They can't even. The, the bad thing about that is you can't even kill Jackie's because you have no mana. And Vi isn't there. So, like, it's actually just a pointless flash. When does the slapping start? Dude, I am so tilted about LCK All Pro. Fucking people actually voted Pays over Viper as first team All Pro ADC. Like, I don't even understand why you could believe that. Considering he spent half a split being an absolute dumpster fire in lane and getting his dumbass ch carried by his top side. And no Lehens. I mean, I do think Caria was more critical to T1 success than Lehens was to Genji's. Dude, the crazy thing is, Pays is literally the worst player on Genji. Pays is the worst fucking player on Genji, and he's first team All Pro. What the fuck is that? 
lucky. Sometimes that happens too. It does, and for Giant X, they'll be happy that they got lucky. Remember, if they win this, they are locked into our... Do you be, think it's because they're lazy or they actually believe he's... I don't understand how you could possibly believe that Pays was the best AD carry in LCK this split. I have no idea why they're voting this way. Alright, he's going to eat a hook for free. Uh-huh, and then he flashes. And now we're just going to flash forward. Ignar actually just not bought body, body blocking Zeri Qs. Okay. All right. How did Wonder... Oh, did Wonder try and dive a turret? What happened in the top side here? Flash from Wonder, flash... Yanko's just not... Why doesn't he... Yanko's use... Okay, he uses ult late under turret. What the fuck? What the fuck happened in the top side? Why did it take Yanko so long to use ult? BDD was less impressive this split. He was still better than Zeka. KT has to have, like, it's it's not possible that KT would have zero players in the top three in five positions, guys, and be fourth place and not that far behind uh, the top teams. Like, so pick which KT, who's the best player on KT? You tell me. That player probably needs to be in the top three. Yeah, let's watch what happens here. So he flashes, and then he... Oh, okay, Odo Omne flashes out of Q. Odo plays that really well, by the way. Odo played that beautifully. Dude, I love how Koma and Faker just both voted for all of Gen G's players. Now, Cloud Templar trolled the vote big time, guys. I mean, he shouldn't have ulted in after Odo flashed his Q. You just, you just come back, guys. It's not that big of a deal. If you get Jace's flash, he will die the next time you gank him. It also is just a perception issue because, you know, in collectivistic cultures like Korea, you know, the logic is, well, the best players are the ones who play as part of a team, right? So the best team must contain the best players because they're winning together as a team. That's I think that's like part of the problem. Yeah, it 
looks like it is going to be six. Grubs over to Heretic and to Yankos. The reset from the Giant X bot lane with Ignar now opening through mid. He'll pass down towards the bottom side to get some... Yeah, Trovi did rightfully get MVP, so at least it wasn't a fucking Lehens MVP again. Couldn't believe that he got MVP in summer of last year. That was fucking wild. BDD and Keen just completely stiffed. Dude, I just love that they came to the conclusion that out of all the players on KT in summer, it was Lehens who deserved the MVP. Like, what the fuck, man? Trimby casually clearing well. Okay, let's look at this. His mid is recalling. And instead of waiting for a TP, the enemy mid is pushed and he's trying to contest for Drake. Okay. Okie dokie. We couldn't just wait for our mid and top to recall or to get the actual pressure back on the mid. We have to face check Banana Brush when Annie is TPing back. Righto. The chase comes in from Odo Omnes. He TP in behind. And there goes the kill. Jackie's taking out proactive. Just a little trolling. Don't worry about it. Utilization of the TP advantage that Odo has in that top lane. There was little that this ball lane. Odo's playing very well. Trimby trying to get vision control of the river. I think without his team, leaves him open for being caught out of position. And then Flacker just was not expecting this flank to come through. Wonder being given an opportunity to push in top lane, but look at the lane assignments here from Giant X. They've had Jackie's reset earlier to TP to top to catch that wave. Wonder now gets to go bot, secure himself a plate or two. And now all of a sudden, Giant X find themselves with a gold lead. Jackie is slightly just to push out this wave and then let Odo on they go up back towards. I have no idea what Trimby was doing, guys. And after Trimby uses the dredge line, like you can burn flash in this situation, but you're pretty much dead anyway. And look at that TP. It, it feels like that out of nowhere, because you look on the replay and it comes in so quickly that Flackett is focused on trying to help his support out, looking for a potential fight that he doesn't see Odo Omne coming in from the flank. Very well played by him. And overall by Giant X. Nice play, secures them the second dragon. Coaching staff naturally should be very happy about that. And then crucially, the response afterwards. The lane assignments following was very, very good. Overall, great stuff. But Heretics, just like that, have closed the gold cap. They've secured a bunch of plates on the map. Flackered with his reset, moved into bot immediately. Six grubs helps you get all of these plates as well. And it does. Ten seconds before those plates fall off. Flackered with a 1.6k gold lead. Remember, he did get that double kill in the 2v2. Now he backs off. Patrick able to hold mid lane by himself. It's power of the lethality of Aris. Very easy for you to clear out a wave with the uh, piercing arrow. Constantly has mid push. You can see that he's about a 1k gold up over Zviro. Max Waldo is coaching GX. He is. So far in this game, but also just the sheer amount of wave code that this karma does. I thought he was living in porn house or whatever. Pretty low, but Giant X is here to contest. They didn't like the fact that Giant X were just being cameramen. Well, here the cameramen want. I thought he was just like an OnlyFans pimp now. Cameramen want a piece of the action. It's like the office all over again as the hook does go down as Peach has a chain of corruption as well. Peach stunned up. Feromarcy tries to dash away. Chased down by Wonder. There's a CC from Ignar. It takes them so long to, like, pick off one target here. But they do lose their jungler for it. The extended fight. Heretics is always going to have that <laughs> advantage. Odo Omni wasn't quite there yet, but we talk so much about the poke the Giant Nexus comp has. The second Heretics find that engage is when Heretics is at their scariest with this composition. This area is not going to stop hitting you in the fight, and Varus just doesn't quite have the tools when you're going for Lethality to be able to match that. So, 
Heretics find themselves a kill. They do lose the Herald. Giant X likely to use this to unlock that mid lane tower. And we know how valuable that can be in terms of getting control of the enemy jungle and then also translating that pressure into these side lane out of towers. Have another look at that. You talked about the Q smite combination from Peach. Hits the eye, Q smite. There was a tiny window where yeah. Yakroth could have got that, but then the chase comes in from Heretics. Nice hook connects from Trimby. The knock up as well. You'll see the quickness tries to go on to Wonder. Throws the he is not just a guy that looks like him a little bit, not even much. Ah, uh, okay. From the camera, yeah. Hello from Bulgaria. Hello. And uh, overall, a pretty even trade kill for Harold. I think the Giant X is still fine with that. The gold largely remains even. And again, ultimately, I think that Heretics, if they can find the fight. So I guess Max Waldo is still just being an OnlyFans pimp. But if they can't close that gap and Giant X can leverage their range, then I think that there's a very real way for them to be able to win out on these team fights. They have so much poke that's very difficult and oppressive to deal with. And All right, well, Giant X still fight. stacking Drakes here. You know, it's Chemtech Soul. Bunny Fufu. -Fu. Oh, well, he also is doing the same thing, but Max Waldo was like making weird videos with OnlyFans girls and like living in a house with them, so. Bunny Fufu, is, I think he learned it from Bunny Fufu, maybe, or got the idea from him. Heretics blind picked Annie. Yes, they sure did. Why do they do that? I don't know. Like, I don't understand why you Zeri, you pick Zeri, and then you blind pick Annie afterwards. Seems super fucking weird. Just lose lane to Karma. Not have any push. You know, almost all the Annie picks we've seen have been RE counter picks, not just blind. He's on the learning to learn craze. Had a good talk on. What's a talk on stream? Had a good talk on stream with LS. All right. Well. He must have he must have a trust fund or something like that. So before we get to that, let's look at this dragon fight. Yankos off on the flank has been spotted by that red ward. A lot of darkness, though. Giant X, this is where their poke is crucial. Mm -hmm. Wonder being the front line is important for Heretics because of the tankiness that he has. But Heretics have found a way in. They've actually started off the dragon themselves. Patrick gets the push in mid, and here we go. Yankos trying to sneak his way all the way around here. Wonder will catch that mid wave, making sure that Giant X don't get free priority. Yankos just waiting. So they better lay. I mean, if they get hit by a bunch of this poke, they're going to be super sad. They also just have no, you know, I, they have no way to finish off these kills. Like, if you're going to play the Annie, at least play the Viego. No, it's like, so you get a kill and then what? Or, like, you get some CC down and then what? Jesus Christ. See, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. There's no protection for Zeri in the back line. You have to go in. You're not peeling. Vi just face checks, bone plating on Oduamne. Okay. We kill the Karma, but who gives a fuck if we kill Karma? You know what I mean? Meanwhile, they're just all getting CC'd by Ignar. They just all get CC'd by the countering gauge from Rakan and Rel. And Flathead can't do any damage. What, is he just wall right all the way over here? Yep. He literally wall rides directly into a Rel and a Rakan that are ulting. Okay, well. Get. Me. The. Fuck. Out. Please, guys. Please. Please! Please! Why is he wall riding into the ults of Rel and Rakan?
There's no pressure. There's no pressure. These guys, boom, 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 kill you all. The Zeri is the only form of damage. You literally just fucking ints. This is painful, guys. Why are we not flaming the fuck out of Flacket? He literally wall rode into Rakan and Relults. <laughs> Honestly, that was just a bit of a misplay from Flack, and I think he overcommitted that. He wanted to make this big wombo combo happen. Dived in, gets the multi- Sad you don't have the tiebreaker on the lineup today. I mean, I can put it there. I hate watching SK play, though. This weekend has looked great for this team. I was going to comment coming into this series, not this series, this game, I should say. Heretics have the opportunity to get their first 3-0 weekend mm -hmm. of the year. Giant X, the same. <laughs> uh, I thought it was going to be way more likely for Heretics, but Giant X have shown a lot of growth. They've got a solid draft. They have plenty of options. And right now, they're just taking their time. They know that. I mean, they know that as long as they play the patient game, that uh, they have a very good chance of taking down Heretics, denying them those top spots, and uh, locking themselves a spot in the top eight. I very much agree. I just, uh, I'm looking at it in terms of drafts, and we talked about this a little bit, and they talked about it a bit on the analyst desk as well. Giant X have fallen foul of trying... LEC has been kind of unwatchable the past few weeks. Game quality seems abysmal. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Why would you like to be their composition? This composition doesn't do shit. Okay, so they like CC somebody, CC, CC, CC somebody, CC somebody. That somebody doesn't die, and then they have no damage, and Flacka just fucking wall rides in. It, the Zeri makes no sense in this composition. Like, if you had a Viego, great. If you had a Jinx, cool. You know what I mean? Kaisa? Not bad. What I will say is that when it comes to dive burst comps, they may seem simple, right? Because, you know, flash R. It's good. Everyone presses R. Yeah. But at the pro level, there's a certain element of, like, how you execute the flank, right? And we saw in that last fight, Odo Omne just sat there to watch Yankos, right? Yep. And he actually was the one that took that initial cue. And then, even though the Vi still ulted on to um, Jackie's, it, it wasn't that bad, right? And that's yeah, Vi ulting Jackie's is not is not the way you play this composition at all. You, you, Karma's just there to absorb cooldowns, guys. Like, Varus is having a party every time you don't ult him. You kind of control the vision to make their approach harder. And ideally, Giant X never actually want to start the dragon because then it becomes easier because there's this other thing hitting you and you can sometimes funnel yourself into this awkward position. And so that's why Giant X didn't actually want to start it. They just kind of like sat in that fog of war, took their time, and they were very patient about it. And as long as they take their time, I think that it's not as easy as it looks. But if Heretics do find that right engage, then the comp will look very easy, right? And I think <laughs> I, w I agree with you in terms of everything you just said. It was all correct. But usually, when a team that has a press R comp gets ahead in the game, Oh, yeah. It becomes very hard for the team with the, the good disengage to, That's true. to play against it. And Giant Tech's have averaged minus 1,852 gold at the 15 minute mark. So that was where my doubt came That's in. That's fair, but this yeah. game they've done a good job. Yeah. Can you actually just check for me, Betty? I know you have a spec open. Here we go. You ready for a bunch of crowd control to not kill somebody again? Because they have 100% win rate when they're ahead at 15 minutes. 
So the game may have already At been 15, finished. At 15, it was 100 gold difference. Oh, okay. So they were 100 gold behind, though. They were 100 gold behind. Well, we can't use that stat. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy. We don't have uh, the Nostradamus of stats to, to prove to us that Giant X will win, but with it 17 seconds on the Drake, they're now setting up around it. Peach trying to collapse in. Yanka's going to catch mm -hmm. up for the moment, but Peach pretty tanky. Damage already onto Spyro, though, as Trimby steps forward. There's the dredge line. Wonder going in with the bow. Blacker going in as well. Ignite they used everything on Jackie's guys, and he and took one third his HP and damage. Trimby's already a third HP. Blacker trying to do everything he can just to get those autos down, but Jack is, Jackie's kills off Trimby. Holy shit, guys. Holy shit. So he hooks him. He ults him. I guess they still have any ult and they still have Vile, so they're okay, but they actually got the worst end of that trade because all the poke came in and they killed Trim B because he went in and nobody else did. of great patience and control from Giant X. They played around their vision very well. They played more of a front-to-back style than Tanks went with most of the engagement. The Belk Man. I just like letting you know I use my Bezos Bucks on you. Thank you. I think all Bezos Bucks should be used on me. I appreciate them. Other streamers don't appreciate Bezos Bucks as much as I do. They don't even thank you. You guys just throw Bezos bucks at him and they don't even acknowledge your existence. I acknowledge you. You too, Dylan RD and Buzzkiller Games. You have been recognized for your generous Bezos bucks donation. Are you surprised Perks and Kaiser being gone would have such a large effect on Heretics? Uh, not surprised about Perks, given his form. Little, uh, I mean, I think we won't know how they, they would have done with Kaiser, but Kaiser was fine. Last split. <coughs> but yeah, they have looked better. Okay. He's coming in from the flank, sitting in this fog of war. He will be spotted out there, but he's just Trevor sounds too strong. Okay, here comes the poketing. All right. Okay, we use that, but there's no nobody to follow up, so we have to flash in. We have to flash in. Crash down comes through. Odo Omne gets Karma shields. Then he just flashes out, and Peach is there, killing them all. Varus just does whatever the fuck he wants. They just run around in a circle. This is hilarious to watch. This composition is so shit from Heretics. Patrick just is like, I don't need Flash in this game because nobody's trying to kill me. So why not just use it to pick up this kill? Oh God! Okay. Holy shit! Oh no, this is a lot of damage. If somehow the Milky Way go to MSI, will it be more hype than if TS or JDG? I mean, I think they will do worse at MSI than Top Esports or JDG. So. I mean, it's one of those things where the temporary hype of them qualifying would be immediately met by the disappointment of them actually being there. You know what I mean? It's like, do we want Team Liquid at MSI? Giant X is like, look at these guys. Nobody, nobody even touches Varus every single fucking fight. The thing is, is that 
the temporary joy of FPX going to MSI would just be met with immediate regret. It's like getting really drunk and having a great time, but then the next day you have a horrible hangover. That's the equivalent, guys. You don't actually want that. It's not worth the trade is not worth it. Your top four LEC teams. Uh, G2, Fnatic, Vitality, Heretics, probably? It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad to move to the next phase with an under 50% win rate. I mean, credit to Giant X, though. They've actually played relatively well this game, but it is kind of easy mode. Dude, this poke is so fucking bonkers. Look at Trimby. Oh, it doesn't give any fucks, man. He's, he's like building HP now. Well, that was boring. Next. They wanted to give themselves that spot in playoff. We'll see, Rob. It's been a bit of an up and down for both. As they look across, uh, Madlands Koi. I mean, honestly, just trying to. Okay. Talia, first pick. Get rid of Bans, Moldervaris, Nico. Really, you're betting Nico? Fresco, he isn't even good at Nico. Oh, okay. We're just gonna. What, what is with Europe and just Zeri every fucking game? Okay, just play Jinx, please. Or Kaisa, fine. Just kill her in the back line. Fine. Volibear. Ari. Banning Rexai Nautilus. Okay, Renata. Ew, Zeri Renata Glask. That is a shit lane. I hope they like getting pushed in or dove by Volibear. Leona, hell yeah. Kill them. Murder them. I love it. Blind Cassante into Udyr. Okay. Coming. 
I respect that you did not put his face on the tiny squirrel. That was <laughs> one. I'm still. I mean, I I like this. I mean, they have a lot of backline threat. In the laning phase, like the dives could be really sick with Razork here. Put more attention into the bottom side of the map, and just make sure. You know, like I I mean, pre six, this Zeri Renata lane is just garbage. FlyQuest would take a fat dump on Fnatic. No, they wouldn't. Their bot lane would just send the game. Fnatic's bot lane is just, or FlyQuest bot lane is just too bad. They they do random shit. They like makes very shit game states. Why they go Glask there, please? Is she good against tanks? I don't know. I think it's bad. Because, like, the Kaisa can you she can dodge it and still get into your back line, even if you use ult. So, I'm not a big fan. Thing is, you are going to win at level 1 until Leona hits level 2. Is Lulu better here? I mean, yes, almost certainly. You don't have any peel, really, for the Zeri. Right, we just have to watch the Volibear. The Volibear should just murder everybody this game. I mean, the Volibear should have just crazy prio on the map because he can just fuck up Rel 1v1. Like, they win the 2v2 in top and mid, and they win the 3v3 in bot with Volibear. So, just Volibear does everything should be the name of the game. Okay. Level 3 Rel Gank. No, 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 no. He can't. No flash. That's correct to die there. Okay, just kill bot. It's rather silly. Death. Folly 6 camp. The dash over the wall as the tether is still there does not bring Jun along with him. Razor here, bottom side moving through the brushes. Very powerful. And the thing about the Volibear we've just seen, it just takes over. Clear speed so good, early trading so good. But excellent window there that Elioya capitalizes on to find the first assist at the very least. Because Razor takes away Scuttle, holds on to at least a one camp lead for now. A little bit more. Ayoye should be able to move up here, and we'll try and contest for a second scuttle, but honestly, with the way the wave is pressed in, it might be a little bit difficult. And um, for Skelly, though, hovering here, maybe they go for the 2v2, but especially after you just... I actually don't know who wins this game, guys. Ayoye is going to be able to take his Raptor's free set and then try and come back in onto the map. Um, so I think, again, it's going to be a case of Ayoye... Double Crab here for Razork. Ayoye now at... Maybe clear his croaks and then make his way to boss side. Chicken respawn. Wolf, Wolf respawn for Razork. Razork, camp ahead. Nixies, Nixies, Nixies and GMK, or Nixie San GMK. Thank you for your tier one sub. Ellie Spring was confusing, minus Casey sucking. Yeah, this is bad. No LPL today? Nah. I gotta watch some LEC. Talk about playoffs on SI tonight. We'll do some LPL, you know, later this week. Maybe we'll stream some. <gasps> Not League of Legends. Notoriously low, allowing him to stick it out a little bit longer in this one, but he's also there to cover just in case Razork needs support. First guy we could charm this time around, and Humanoid really can't trade back there. Nice little okay from the Ramus. Ayoye's coming in from the bottom side here, though. Will be spotted, so Humanoid has to back away. But means Boy Group's going to be able to go across the Cooking? No, I need to get my stuff from the States. I won't get my cooking stream stuff until the end of May. Back to Korea. 
I've been meaning to play Pentiment. Maybe I'll play that or a story-based game. I've never played Hollow Knight. Made in time for the mukbang. No, the mukbang is over now. My Chipotle chicken burrito bowl, which was fucking delicious. Will we get more smoked briskets? No, I'm in Korea. My smoker's in the States. Continue to have Oyoya pressure in this bottom side of the map. It's impossible for Jun to actually go in. All he just gives his life and when Oyoya shows. I can't bring my smoker over, guys. All right, am I a Bellatro enjoyer? I have not played Bellatro. There's a couple of games that uh, I played unavowed a while ago, and there's this the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Some of these like uh, Wadget Eye adventure games are fun to play on stream. I've heard Hollow Knight is good. But Pentiment is a game I really have been wanting to play, so maybe we'll try that. You guys also love it when I play Crusader Kings, so... Tale of Two Brothers is good. Yeah, but I need... I would have to play that with my wife. Um, I played the other games by that dev. A way out, and um, it takes two. We're really good. About most of their games, watch it. I yeah, I played Unavowed on stream a couple years ago. One thing I don't like about Crusader Kings 3, though, is it, it just takes a long time to get, like, the tech you need to get a single air, which is different than Crusader Kings 2. So it's it's harder to get the form of government where you need get your primogenitor. Because, like, it's very, it can be very annoying to play that game when your kingdom just splits up every time your character dies. Have I played a, the classic called Maniac Mansion? Oh, hell yeah, man. Day of the Tentacle, Sam and Max Hit the Road. I fucking love those games. No, it's not about getting... It's having too many heirs, right? So your kingdom splits. That's the problem. I don't understand why we've had no action here in this bot lane. Especially now that Razork is six. Like, why can't we... Why can't we put some pressure on down south? Oh no. Oh, the bailout's so close. I like how Kaisa's just in base this whole time. And Zeri's in bot lane. We're just checking Banana Brush with our little faces. So this getting CC'd forever. Nice sidestep for Frescawi. 
doesn't have the... Oh my oh, gosh, oh, so oh, oh, incredibly oh. close. I thought for sure maybe a flash auto, but he doesn't want to risk it. He doesn't want to risk it. That lion's it. only up a thousand gold, surprisingly. And very likely the tower plate. It's just very weird that we're, like, trying to vision control River a minute and a half. Like, what are, what are we doing here? It's literally a minute and a half before... It's two minutes before the next Drake. It's two minutes before the next Drake. I, what? What are they doing? Like, look at this. Okay, so there's 30 seconds until we get the Void Grubs back up for Fnatic, okay? We have three. We just all in the top side. We traded Ghost. He has no TP. He loses this trade. He gets chased out. So he's creating pressure in the top side. ADC isn't here. What? Why aren't we just trying to do this? Right? Like, you you actually have pressure in topside. There's no point in fighting for fucking banana brush right now and walking into all their CC with your little face. What the fuck? You know, Humanoid could have just walled them off at Grubs. What's going on top side? Why is Oscar in an under tower now? Now Humanoid's 1 HP. At least he has TP. Okay, we're flashing. Razork has no ult, though. Alright. Alright, fair enough. Okay, now now you can actually just get the grubs, surely. Oscar is trying to last long enough so he has TP. Soup is here. Dude, why is Noah always in fucking base? Why is Noah in base every time? He needs static shift. Okay, but instead of Noah actually walking to void grubs, he's going back bot. Oh. No, just fucking living in base. Lose void grubs. Okay, we could have just gotten six void grubs or at least had a meaningful fight. Okay, now surely, surely, he said, surely... What we do now is catch the wave here, wait for TP to come up, then we recall and we set up for a TP play onto Drake. Because it's okay. We whoopsied a little bit. Six Void Grubs aren't that important. But surely we use our double TPs to get a Drake, right? Right? Nope. We TP to mid lane. And we get charmed, and we take a bunch of damage. And then... Okay, Oscar and has TP advantage now. And then... And then we set up for Drake. Yep, we sweep out the vision. The Wally Bear comes. Okay, we recall. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, we have TP. We're sitting in Fountain with TP. Yes. Yes, we like this. We clear up Banana Brush. Yep. And we get Drake. Okay. I was getting nervous there, guys. Uh-oh, I'm getting nervous again. Oh, nice. You catch Elio. Okay, just leave. Just leave. Just leave. Just leave. Where? Wait. Wait. Where is Oscar in? Why is he TPing top? Just wait. Just wait, dude. Wait until they get out. What? Ah, ah, ah. It has 5,000 HP. Why are you TPing top? The wave isn't even at your turret. What are you doing? 
What are you do? What are you doing? That's gonna be the big thing because they conceded all by the Oh my god. Europe, please. You fucking see you see the Udir. You see him. You know he doesn't have TP, but you know Ari has TP. You don't know where Ari is. You don't know where Ari is, but you know where the Udir is. You know what this means, guys? That Mad Lions has done the smart thing and they put the, the person with TP into top lane. This has 5,000 HP. You have to wait. There is no threat on your plates. There is no threat to lose this wave. Uh... For the grubs, the 9 6 grub buff, which I oh. certainly do like, but if they're in time to contest the Drake, that's going to be the big thing because they conceded all Just the wait. Just, just wait. So MDK, if they TP in you two, see Udir. It's inexcusable. You see Udir. Well, I guess it was worth it because Cassante got a couple plates, guys. Ignore the fact that they lost like three, four waves of minions into this turret, that this turret will go down first. Well, I guess they traded plate for or tower for tower. Hashtag worth. Just some squeaky clean League of Legends, guys. Just some squeaky clean. LOL. For us to enjoy. What am I eating? I'm not eating anything anymore. Dag is trying to be me. Ah, uh, yes, the Leona. Surely, what you need to defend this turret is a single Leona. Jesus Christ. No, it just literally gets trolled by Jun not body blocking charm. That hurt a little bit. That's the moment where you press tab, realize the Ari is four zero three and go, ah, oh, I see. Yeah, there's that thing. It's a nine sector. I'm gonna be honest, it's there's a lot of things you could hover there. We could just circle that whole that whole thing. Yeah, just this is a problem. Just this is that there it is. Found it.
this go so wrong? We we're so busy talking about how incredibly <laughs> overpowered Frescawi is at this exact moment. Dear Lord. But that was the problem was that because Noah had got some chunks, they were What is in a summoning insight episode? It is in four hours. Live in four hours. Means he's here to protect Miran from any volley bears that might show up. Skirin should be able to clear the wave though. So it won't quite be top terror, but still. Bubo said on a hotline league is rumor that Fudge is on the chopping block. Good. I think I think Bwipo is just mind gaming Fudge though, because he just giga clapped him in their last head to head, and he's just mind gaming him before finals, making him think that he's in the hot seat. So as long as you keep people so pushed up to top end, you're pretty happy here as Madeline's core. Definitely. Unfortunately, you had to give it up, but of course, three goes make this a little bit faster. How disappointed are you with the LCK all pros team? Are you going to stream your targeting, <laughs> targeted slapping spree? <laughs> I'll talk about it on SI tonight, dude. It's such bullshit. And this is where Madeline's core, they get to is Fudge not the longest serving C9 top at this point? So Fnatic trying to contest at the moment, but you can see... Was he? Longer than Impact? Yeah, balls probably was longer actually. You can see you're not allowed in this jungle right now because of how much MDK control and with the amount of money are. Mirwin's going in. He thinks he's cool because he's Udyr, but he's just eating every Q. Oh. What actually happened there? It's crazy he didn't get that kill. He didn't check any of his autos. Oh, he second guessed himself. Yeah, I think Mirwin gets that if he doesn't second guess himself. I like how they just four men bang him on this side. I mean, they know, like, see the they know Volbear is on top sides. So is a very safe dive. They see him on the ward, so it's just free. Okay, straight to Drake. Goes in, Noah leaps out. Frescawi 
My God, the flash into the alt. The spear rush takes him to safety. Noah dangerously close to killing him. One more item, one more dagger, one more longsword. Probably would have done it. But now Jun? the Herald charging, spinning, 360-ing. It's a little bit confusing now. Is the Leona finally going to get into the midst of the fight? Hostile if only the Leona had been there to appeal for Noah, then they just win this fight. But Leona decided to take a trip in the Herald instead. Ah, yes, and now Supa gets bailout. Okay, guys, let's talk about this. So you get a knock-up, but the Leona being in here means that Alvaro can just go ahead and flash ult these two, which then forces Noah's flash. Dude, Sue actually plays as well. Flashes over to get the bailout. Sue played that well. But getting into the Herald right there is pretty fucking troll. It's also a very late TP from Cassante. position he's continuing to push on forward but the big thing you have to keep an eye on is watch it the bailout oscar is trying to time it for the second that it goes down but he actually messes up ever so slightly so that then super is able to flash forward get the reset onto the leona and from that point forward you just can't touch him he's getting so many dashes in the back line and mdk are just very nicely done by super i think good damage but he's got another dash spear rush forward onto noah another, this is they're just slaughtering fanatic fanatic stepping too far forward humanoid Noah getting chunks taken out of him has been a, a very big problem this game because he keeps the team keeps losing pressure because he gets chunked out or dies. I mean, part of this was Fnatic just being super greedy with TPs, playing the map badly. Excellent performance thus far. The Ari, I was initially a little bit skeptical. How well for us? A Kaisa this time. Poor human time. You can see the Weaver's wall though. Humanoid anticipates the collapse on the side. And for MDK, it's just about controlling this jungle on the top side. As long as you get the barn right now, they're trying to pull t teleports out of Fnatic so they can get control on the map. Sustained damage isn't incredibly high. You can see this is taking a bit of time. Frescali also not committing to the objective. Fnatic, I think, recognize that this is happening and instead just go for tier two. Recall's coming out. Veerwin can try to contest and the rest of the side of MDK now retreating, but they're going to knock a tier two down of their own. Exactly, and this is why I like the call from MDK. It's like, hey, we can go for both. Wave was already there in top side, so you get the threat in the tier two, and you still got the TP on Mirman to try and come in if anything does go a little bit awry. So tier three, oh, oh my god. Full committing for the play. Humanoid's already used all of his CC. John tries to throw down the solar flare, and Humanoid's just going to drop. Supa now legendary. The tower will fall. Yeah, it's very weird that we didn't see any action in the bot side in the early parts of this game. Part of that was Humanoid, like, randomly dying. At level three, but the entire split MDK with a lead is down. Doubt it. Yeah, I mean you gotta go. I I think I think Mad Lions played this pretty well. I don't think I don't think you're killing I don't think you're killing the But I mean it was really just inaction on the part of Fnatic and like opting into weird five versus fours or four versus fives. The score lines of his carries. Zero deaths on Supa. Zero deaths on Frescali. Immaculate performance. If Fudge hadn't swapped to mid that one split, he'd have the most served time served as C9 top. He is literally equal with Balls and Licorice at two, two years, ten months. So thank you, Adanium. Guy Splitter, Supa does get locked up though, but immediately cleanses out to safety. The hostile takeover buying all the space the Zeri needs. Lightning! Cutting through the back line of Fnatic. Humanoid now backing away. Noah's got nowhere else to go. A killer instinct. More like an instinct of desperation. Kill Zell. Empty on But there's a pentakill. <laughs> and that's what people remember when we return an interview with Super.
All right, G2 versus Vitality time. Hopefully this will be the first good game of today where I don't have to scream in agony. We we'll go grab some coffee. I'll be back.
time for you. No, you can talk to me any other time. I do tell you. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Gamers 2 versus Team Vitality. Okay. Okay. Draven. No Callista ban. Well, that's going to be an instant pickup for G2, obviously. Nico and the Renata Glass. Okay. They give up Oriana Rel. Okay, we're going to pick Annie for VTO. Oh, yeah, you love to see it. Single target damage. Single target damage. Single target damage. Viego resets. R -r -r resets. Are right, we going to take Karma support here? Karma Callista sounds kind of ass, but whatever. So I'm curious what they are actually maybe thinking of, because I'd be happy to put Ralph Fox here as a response to most of the engagement. The cute dragon. It's the ugly boy. Okay, we're going to take Zaya. Still put rail in the bot. Oh, for the engage after getting one. We're doing crazy bit. shit in top and, lane. Yeah, the Zach for BB in the top side instead was. And we're back to Leoner. Still put rail in the bot lane. Would have, I think, I think, I mean, look, very strong engage. Let's take Zaya Rakan. Okay, so they could, they would have known that this is, this is going to be top lane, so they opt into the Zach pickup. This is why Gragas was banned, guys, because Gragas is very good into Jace. So we have heavy amounts of engage with Leona and Zach, and it's all about getting Viego resets in a front-to-back composition. Thing about this, though, pretty low range. Like, they're going to have a hard time answering the longer range of this and zone control of this composition, right? Potentially in the mid and late game. Leona Zach is such incredible engage though, because you can actually set up for Zach jump by hitting Leona R. Look, this game is incredibly important for the top of our table. If G2 win, they're in sole control of first place. Kind of Viego's playground again, though. Ori should have pressure early. So should top, but, I mean, the gank potential obviously huge for Viego into those lanes. feels very do well if he wants to leave side lane and actually, like, come down to interact with the bot lane. It's funny that you say that, but you're right. Like, I think the more I think about this team, it's like, okay, give Hans, Han, and Mickey something. Incredibly strong jungle mid duo. I mean, and with the Rex size and the Zacks of the world, more and more our top laners are becoming um, just like weird pick enthusiasts. That's the thing. Like BB's most played is Rex side. <laughs> he's, play, he's played it twice. Everything else that's going like Volley Bear, Jay, Scrag is. Yeah, to be fair, he's played every other yeah. pick once. But he's so playing sustained he's tanks. He's playing Volley Bear, Zach. To be able to play it twice. Rex side. These are all sustained tanks in top lane that are just very annoying. Matchup, maybe with a few more levels under his belt and some armor, both of them will be. A bit more comfortable, but you can see Yike clearing away from top side. Meaning Broken Blade's gonna be pretty miserable, and Photon's very likely to grab uh, a plate here if no one supports. Yeah, I think the uh, the big thing here is for Daglas just to try and get some early vision, which I think he's about to go for now. Actually, just a transitional gank it looks like, but Daglas, Q cash caps. Not sure if it was predict. Yep. <sighs> Or if it was just reaction, but either way, well played. Sees that that's really the only angle that the game trade flash. Flashes back, but of course now uh, something that can be capitalized on. Daglas is summoner spells significantly less important. Okay, Yike is a camp ahead now, though he's actually two, three camps ahead. It's actually three camps ahead. And now they're going to try and get control and do a little invading. Okay. Should get double crab. Okay. Does get it on stable matter. We'll come back to life. I don't think Photon can push for anything else there, but 
already getting that down means if there is ever pressure or attention topside from Daglas, the dive is so much simpler to execute. Well, Dungeon's going to take the reset, though. Spend the extra little bit of gold that he's picked up and try to make for his topside. Daglas, spotting Yike, a huge amount of this is, again, Daglas just trying to make sure that Daglas has been a lot better this split than last split, and I, that's a huge factor in Vitality's improved performance. Now the follow-up CC cards, he can pull back on the feathers, but doesn't quite have three on the lineup. That's the Ignite down for Hillisang. Very positive health trade for the side of Vitality, but a sum in favor of G2. Yeah, I think a lot of that was just trying to ensure that Mickey gets pushed down low. He still has another pop, which he's going to pop now, but Hillisang trying to push him back, because when Leona goes in, you've already seen, like, she has to go for it. So, want to try to cover his caps? Caps. Also need just to burn a pot. <laughs> yeah. I think it's safe to say or recall. Yeah. It looks like recall is going to be the option instead. Of G2 kind of around the map at the moment. <laughs> Uh-oh. G2 early game. Question mark. Root now landing. Hansama locked up. But Yike there just in nice time. Nice done. Hillisang has been caught out. He tries to dash. He tries to flash. There's a safety. But the timing just not quite there as Yike takes Rakan to dance around and look cool. So he doesn't actually go back. This is a little bit interesting is that... You know, so why they don't think he's there is because they, I think they see him in mid lane. They see him in mid lane on the wave. He actually, this is actually pretty clever by Yike. Look at what Yike does, by the way. So he crosses over into mid as if he's going to scuttle and then he goes back down to kink. <laughs> and yeah, they have a ward here, but they wouldn't necessarily see him getting scuttle crab. So he actually just trolls by walking through the mid lane to show himself, looking like he's going for double scuttle. And then he literally just wraps around back through the jungle to gank bot. So, I mean, bot lane's probably pretty pissed right here because they're like, what the fuck, man? You guys just, uh, we just saw him mid. How did he get down here? It's actually such a troll path. Hillsang is probably really confused about what just happened. Douglas is like, don't worry, guys, I'll get crabbed now. Bob is with you. Does that mean I get to see you in Korea? Setup here is a bit risky because Daglas isn't too far off. They really need to be able to burst Photon down. He already queued forward, though. That might just be the death sentence. The flash out to safety. Still the Spectral Mock. Connect. Setup here is a bit risky because Daglas isn't... You already were going to do, do an important April function. We're both invited to. I didn't know if you were going to come. They really need to be able to burst Photon down. That's good to know. Forward, though. That might just be the death sentence. The flash out to safety. Still the Spectral Mock. Connect from Yike, but he's only level 4. Jace just trying to dance on him with the Hyper. Daglas now coming in. Yike has to be very careful. Photon, if he swans back to Hammer Stance, that's going to be one dead. Oh man. Level three roam. Setup here is a bit risky because Daglas isn't too far off. They really need to be able to burst Photon down. Oh, they see him coming in. Still hits the stun off the flash. Daglas being here though. Yikes. It was made very clear to me it was not optional. <laughs> Oh my god. Over aggressive from G2 and Photon's more than happy to oblige them with a quick death. I mean VTO just he he's got he sees the kill shot because Cap still has no flash from the gank earlier and he's not six, so they just go all in. That's nice. It's just a solo. That is a generous assist, League of Legends. And Karzi got out. He got the cleansing flash. He managed to escape away from Mickey. I thought he was as good as dead. So three quick kills for Vitality. Top and mid have just gone massively in favor of them. Certainly have. And I think the only frustrating thing of your Vitality is that two of those kills are on to Daglas, but it'll help him at least keep up in terms of early gold. Maybe get even further ahead. Photon, though, sitting pretty. 
G2 is never top 10 in the world. Yeah, they are. I hate to tell you guys they are still top 10 in the world. Have you seen how bad some of, like, the th the third and fourth, like, the fourth seeds are in LPL and LCK? I hate to tell you, but also G2 is definitely still winning the split. Yeah, I should have backed away. Again, this is like the second game in a row where we see a Jace uh, get his flash bird, and instead of just coming back later, you try and pursue the Jace. G2 better than KT slash DK? They're definitely better than DK. They have late game shot calling that's pretty good, guys. They're probably better than KT, too, if I'm being honest. KT's pretty shit. G2, G2 has impressed me more consistently than KT has this split. Alright, well, let's skip ahead. Jesus Christ, Photon with the rum. Feels good to have a Korean top laner in the LEC, bro. That is true. Feels good for Douglas as well to have four kills, but I really think he would like to have that spread right, out a little back. bit more, okay? I take it back. We're not praising Douglas anymore. This is highly suspect. You can't play Rel and also take the kills. <laughs> Still, though, I think it's the well, that creative early gank from Yike has just translated into getting CC'd until the end of time. Caps, just zero mana. Alrighty. Can Rel do anything with kills? No. You see, next patch, they're just removing Rel's bonus damage to jungle creeps. Good, it's a stupid jungle champ. Get her out of the jungle, that's what I say. It's alright, we have the new stunbot jungler of Skarner coming in. So, Skarner and Poppy will just replace Rel, don't worry. Yeah, the other thing about this is this really wasn't necessary for G2 to win, right? So, not sure how hard they're playing this one. Smite fights with Rel felt unwinnable. Yeah, it's stupid. It's not that they felt unwinnable, it's that they were unwinnable. If both players are playing optimally, you actually just can't win. I'm just here for the KC game, you dirty raccoon. Do you ever think you will do a Fog of War review, like only show G2 vision? Uh, I would love to do that, but I am. we don't have replays from Riot, so I can't do that. It's actually impossible to do. That would be fucking great content, but Riot says we're not allowed to see that. Mickey 
can follow up, but Yike a little bit too far away for them to be able to push any further. We'll just be the wave crashed on top side, but here comes Karzi and Hilly casting the brush. If he gets spotted, this is gonna be bad. He's got no mana, they got no room to make a play, and he's already forced to reset, or for, sorry, cancel his reset timer, excuse me. We'll give six grubs to Vitality though, because you can see Photon, he's gonna be able to reset, TP back up in his top side. You're trying to interrupt Hilly, nice interrupt <laughs> on the caps. Stop. <laughs> and again, you're just buying time because G2, stay down to the map, oh, he's not the done. Way. Won't be able to get it. There's not enough range on the, the gleaming yeah. quill. Yep. But there you go, pushing top side with the TP back from Photon. They pushed in mid. That's six grubs now for Vitality and a minute until Dragon. But might have taken a little bit of time. G2, I don't think they want to try and contest, but they are in the area. Well, Cap's already TP to the bot lane. BTO still has his TP, so this is not really the play that G2 are looking for unless Vitality overcommit. Space call now forced out. I think he pulled back to safety by Han Sama, but the quickness comes in from Hillisang. Charm again onto this Leona. That was way too over aggressive I from Hilly. Like they finished nah, because they're setting up for Drake. The thing is, is that now you now you have push here in mid, and you have this Drake spawning, and you're probably gonna be able to get a mostly uncontested Drake. I agree. I know but the quickness comes in from Hillisang. Charm again onto this Leona. Thing is, Mickey actually has to recall now, so they can't. You know, if you get the, rid of the support, they can't actually set up any vision control. But as I was to say, Vitality had already got the lead. No Hansama ultimate for Mickey when the next dragon was about to spawn was like Fantastic. So Mickey X is 50% health and he actually just can't recall. He can turn a focus on him. Karzi should be able to finish him off. But now Haley again, take a step too far forward. We'll dash it to video, but I think this is where Vitality had their way. He's making it very difficult for them to get any kind of control in River. Too heavily, too quickly. And it's actually giving opportunities for G2 to kind of take a breather, reset, and come back on an even footing for the next fight. Yeah. You were pretty close to getting everything uh, you wanted in that exchange, where you basically get Caps' TP for free because Hillisang cancels that recall so many times. If it had completed, he could have just walked bot, and he would have had that TP available. You could have gotten all six grubs. So now you can push out mid like and just walk into River and take Drake, right? That just sets you up for the next fight. You, you talked about it. This dragon, cooldowns are still going to be gone, but now Hillisang... No? We'll Douglas... If Vitality wants to kill Red first. First on the wave in bot lane, and Hillisang has to be careful about stepping too far forward. Damage now on the Photon. Big wave there. Mickey X and Broken Blade should have enough damage to finish off the Jace, but Photon still going in. The Eclipse, not enough. The why are we running up here with everybody? Just go fucking do Drake. What are we doing? They, why are we running into Top River? Just If they're going to commit their support into the top side, just go do Drake. Shockwave once more. You, you guarantee it because you have Rel on your team. They can't actually win a 50-50 smite versus you. Vitality, three members committed into the mid lane. Five grub buff. They're going to shred through this tower so quickly. Yike off to the side. But with Daglas and Hillisang here to cover with Karzi having cleanse and ulti available, there is no getting onto this Zaya. And they can lean into bot side as well. Caps is too low, has no TP. So the immediate force onto bot lane means that they should be able to maybe with the next wave get the tower. But actually, I was going to say that wave was cleared out by Caps just as before he reset. So it will just be Dragon instead. But at least Vitality starting to get a little bit more control again on the map. Vitality has to be feeling good. They've gotten every objective in the game. First tower belongs to them. Five grubs, two dragons. Yes, a 2k gold lead. Not insurmountable, certainly. The good news for G2 is they finally have an avid. They actually wasted a lot of time because by trying to save Photon here, they didn't do Drake fast enough. And this actually opens up an opportunity for Yike to cross map into the Herald. Very frustrating. Might allow them to break open mid lane tower. But the game for Caps especially is so much more difficult with mid lane tier one down. Look how far back he has to play. It could just be BT on the wave. It could be three people. He's not sure. So has to give the benefit of the doubt to the side of Vitality. It also becomes very difficult to use this rip Herald now as G2. Because how do you try and force a wave state where you can actually get the advantage on mid wave? Because essentially what you're going to see is Karzi and Healy 
Force mid wave, shove it into the tier two. Healy leaves, groups with Daglis, they get top tier uh, one with Photon, right? You yeah. establish a bunch of vision on top side, no real wave state for G2 to take a terror. So unless they completely abandon the top side of the map and lean in with caps on this bot side to use the Rift Herald there, maybe they can get a terror, but one bot lane terror going down in trade for a top lane terror and use of Rift Herald is still a big win for Vitality. So G2, I think this is why they're trying to set top side here. Look to get the pick as Vitality are starting to move up towards Photon top side. If they can punish Vitality when they skip a step, this Herald can be incredibly impactful, but you're right. If we enter just a normal game state as it is right now, so heavily Vitality favored, it's it's like a consolation prize. It's like half a turret's health bar. They're they're forcing G2 just to cover top side right now, even though the waves have been pushed. So basically they push in, eliminate they push in, eliminate vision, draw in the darkness to here, then they just transition right back into mid lane, push it out, and they just do this over and over and over again. Alright, here we go, back in the jungle, right? Oh no, they're pushed up, so we kill top now. Nope, back in the jungle. you try and push on towards Karzy, he just ults and walks away, right? So I think that's why you're seeing Karzy pretty much free. Here we go, back into the jungle, clearing out all those wards. All that you're trying to do here is Karzy is shove this wave hyper aggressively and fully establish vision on this top side. If you know that there is nobody on G2 that is contesting this top lane push, it becomes significantly easier for Photon to get that tier So this is their game plan uh, to just try and take out tier one in the top side. Up here is actually pretty key, but. I'm surprised to see them backing off. I thought they'd continue the pressure here because you've only got like a minute, minute 30 that you can actually play out these wave states. So three more waves before you've got to go and reset for a dragon coming up. This game is so hard now for G2 to do anything. I mean, credit to Vito as well. He's just been getting aggressive on caps consistently, making sure he never can leave lane even if he does manage to get pushed with more than like 40% HP. It means any piece of CC connecting certainly would finish the job. Tillisang looking to get this started off. Quickness goes in. Z nice interrupts. Interrupt, but Photon there. Daglas coming in behind. Flash keeps Mickey safe for now. Harrowed pass shows that Yike is on the way and Vitality. Don't want to overcommit. Cap says TP and he's missing off the waves. They want to make sure that they're backing up and not giving that across as Video goes to accept the wave on bot side. So they're going to play it slow for the moment, but again, it's just rinse and repeat for Vitality, right? Yeah, so this is a good vision control, control of the top side jungle. Vision on the top side. You know that Mickey has to reset. Cool. Now slip into the top side once more and do the exact same thing. Photon is going to start hard shoving the wave because you can already see they're leaning towards that top side as Vitality, but not actually going to go for it again. I think you're missing opportunities here where you could actually try and contest onto the top side, but they're looking for caps instead. Trying to catch caps, but caps boss them. Smart uses the Scryer Bloom behind him, anticipating a potential play here. And this is the tricky part of playing against G2. Now, the good news is there's not a smolder. They don't have inevitable scaling on their side. But in order to really press them in the mid game, you have to be so diligent around your waves. Otherwise, you're falling back to, I think, what every team falls back to, which is they will eventually have to fight us at the fourth dragon, Rob. But I don't, you don't need to go that far into the game. You shouldn't have to wait for that angle. You are so far ahead, you should be able to end it before then, or at least get an even bigger advantage. But if you can't find the good ways to play around, before all right, so now we're just going to control bot side jungle, take Drake. Pretty good macro game by Vitality, honestly. entirely here but it looks like they're not going to and try and set up for a dragon play or they can try and hold on to the top tier one but i think this might actually be a little bit of a mistake i think you can test mid wave set up vision and look for picks on vitality as they start to come in towards dragon but not feeling comfortable enough to try and go for it. they really want to hold on to the tier one it's just tough because if mickey's in position to punish hellsang for stepping far that that far forward to lay down that vision but they don't have the upfront damage to just immediately kill a Rakan, especially one with Locket, with Flash, you know, Guardian, if he's able to get back to the rest of his team. And so that opportunity doesn't really present itself. They're, they're not in a position where they can just instantly burst someone down without caps in the area. Harold will finally get used. Better than expected, essentially allows G2 to cheat tempo. And they're already there to cover a potential dragon play, so not bad. Really getting the gold a little bit closer, not giving up too much. Yeah, Vitality had recess. Daglas and Karzy gone back to base, so G2 actually finding that perfectly kill a Rakan, especially one with Locket, with Flash, you know, Guardian, if he's able to get... That looks like it was close to expiring. And so that opportunity the Herald here. They're, they're not in a position where they can just instantly burst... It's actually the crazy they get this area. turret. G2, they find these little timings, guys. Because look at that, they actually have two people top lane. 
Why is Karzy recalling now? He needs to go get quick blades. He's super late on the recall, guys. He's he's actually recalling after Drake has spawned. And because he's super late on the recall, it allows G2 to push forward in the mid lane again. And they actually lose control over Drake in spite of the fact that they're the jungler Yike just used Harold in the top side. Because Karzy's just not there. Yeah, what the fuck, man? It's actually crazy that they're able to find this timing. Yeah, Hillisang gets dragon priority though. Doesn't actually have to burn his ult either. I mean, the thing here is that VTO is trying to catch this wave, but this is actually kind of scary for VTO potentially because there's still four people down here and VTO will get dove by the Zack and the Ari. I mean, the problem here is it's just a split call, right? Like these two, Dingus A and Dingus B are not even part of this. You know, they can't get this. They need to protect VTO under the turret. So I actually think Hillisang and, Vita uh, Hillisang and Daglas are doing the, the right thing here, which is that they see the possible dive coming in onto Oriana. Uh, the, the Dingus squad here needs to be in river. Like, it's not even really a threat into the mid lane, and you don't know where Callista is. So where is the Jace and where is the Zaya? That's the real problem. They were trying to prevent this play from happening, but Carsey uh, and Carsey and Photon got distracted by the juicy wave in the mid lane. Just go to tower through try, but that's not the right play. I, I, I'm telling you what the right play is. The right play is your fucking team comes into river to zone them off so VTO can take this and push out. The right play is not these guys split up and go under turret. Okay? You can still get 5v3 dove there by Zach, Ari, and Callista once Callista gets there. Remember, they have Leona, Zach. They can dive you. They can dive you. Like, they got trolled by the Zaya and the Jace. The split call. It was a bad call. He's just controlling vision as they push in. I mean, he doesn't take any damage from this, and he causes charm to miss, and he keeps them around so they can actually con they don't back off on this dive. I mean, they got a kill and they got turret and they can probably switch to Baron. Nice engage from Daglas. I think Hillisang played that really well. Ooh. 
Okay, just go Baron. Fuck that tower. Nikki's coming into the base, but BB has to reset. No TP for him. Caps doesn't have it either, and he's gone. So this is going to be Vitality. The picks and the tower into the Baron. They finally managed to get that play to work. Incredible stuff. Dude is carrying. I mean, he's securing objectives. He's doing his job. He's delaying them so that the dive can actually take place. 60% of the time, it works all of the time. Every time, baby. Go in, and this is perfect, right? Because Hitty actually has a great angle here. Gets Yike and Caps on the backside after Daglas with a great engage. I thought the jig might have been up as video got spotted as they tried to set up for that depth rush, but it doesn't matter. Vitality able to make it work, and you can just see how happy the coaching staff is behind them. I can't... The gestures were happy, the face wasn't happy there from Pat. <laughs> we'll, we'll ask him later if that was a happy He's been hurt before, okay? He's been, I, yeah. Yeah, a lot of throws this particular season. But now, Broken Blade going for the engage. VTO fishing for the side tap. Flash out from cards, he giving that respect. He's been hurt before, okay? He's been, I, yeah. Yeah, a lot of throws this particular season. But now, Broken Blade going for the engage. VTO Yo, Fisher Pro sidestep, flash out from cards, he giving that respect, pull back onto Broken Blade, passive going down, Broken Blade should just die here, the question is Vitality, do they want to keep this fight going or be happy with the single pick? G2 looking for the angle, trying to take one Baron buff away, maybe two, with four before, and Hilly is even trying to find the flank his own. He has ultimate, he's stepping back into the rest of his team, Hansama off to the side, but Hilly wants to keep it, Hansama still on the touch. Nice engage, Vitality played this game well. Yikes trying to back away, pull back is there, Photon doing good damage to Jace, just tearing but now the turn, they're trying to bring it back. Caps one more dash to finish off Photon. He gets one back. Double kill for the Jace. Daglas wants to finish off Yari, but he knows he doesn't have enough in the tank. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the push already coming through. Karzi still alive. It's a KO. Even though the fight looked a little bit funky. Thunderdome being so basic. I'm a Photon TP. VTO. Is the charm follow up there? They don't quite have the angle. Let's bounce coming from Broken Blade, but he's so damn squishy. I come to the side. Cannot. We're back to Dragon, though, and people are caught. Break back. Crab has been now picked up. Are people VTO. caught? BTO sells flash. BTO sells shockwave as well. Playing it so cleanly. BTO stops the pick from coming through. The setup onto the Drake is theirs. Hillisang moments away from the ultimate now coming back. Yike burning, ticking, wants desperately to get the reset, but he can't do it. Caps now. BTO stops the pick from coming through. BTO actually used shockwave here on the Yike. Oh, he misses him because he flashes. Caps now. Three stacks left on the dash, but he's only going to be able to run back to base. The Q flash, the shattering strike from Daglas. Honestly, this is a really good game for Vitality, guys. I don't, I don't hate this game. Fanatic fans elated. Fanatic will be in sole possession of first place after this win from Vitality. One last. A little bit of happy gaming from G2, but to be expected, this game was pretty meaningless for them. Pushing down G2 and Team Heretic. And what an incredible performance to do with. Daglas getting control of that bot side, making sure in good shape. Photon has been an incredibly strong performer for Vitality so consistently on the chase, showing up again. And with that, Fnatic and Vitality are our top two, with G2 shifting right the way down to third. And they were better. Yeah. They got the plays in completely. Mid. They got the plays on top side. Balling, yeah, a little bit iffy, kind of as expected, given the power that G2 brought in draft. But they still managed to bring it back. They built a lead, right took over. Your key player of the game at we see on X, Photon, Daglas, Hillisang, are your options. All very good options. I'm not going to try to sway you anyway. But what I will say, as we see the final bow here, is Vitality know they've done good in the regular season. Yeah, so we're going to have Hillisang on the desk, Rob. Just Ooh. confirmed it. And now we can head to a quick break. Yeah. 
<sighs> Gotta brace myself for this one, guys. Gotta brace myself for this one. <sighs> Ah, the French. Ah, the French. We're back. The situation is in BDS, it's SK, who would then have to play two tiebreakers to make their way out. But we'll focus one game at a time. Firing Yamato really helped the team, yeah. If KC win, we'll keep reminding you over the course of this game, and I'm sure the AD will cover it as well. For now, though, Varus, Oriana, Zinzao, Bandaway, Kalista, Karma, and Rumble to follow in the debate here for KC. What do they want to lock in first? A lot of people with this first pick by. A lot of people with the first pick, AD carry. Who's vulnerable? Oh, the fringe. I think it'll be by. I think, uh, although too fair. <sighs> All right, here we go. Here we go, guys. First pick, but why is Vi guy? Why, guys, why is Vi perma ban or first pick in Europe? What is with Vi Prio in Europa? It's just fucking weird. Is Vi that good right now? No. Ash is up, guys. We're just gonna give him Ash. I Ice's favorite fucking champion is Ash. They def they definitely pick Ash here. Oh, they're going to pick Zeri. Because apparently Zeri and Vi are the two most desirable horny champs in Europe. All right, so we're smoldering into... Yep, yeah, nice. We're smoldering into Zeri. I'm sorry, this guy is not the guy you, you want hyping you up. So damn good. Just the reliable, again, reliable CC and important matches. I will take over anything else. I want Roman hyping me up, you know? Roman can hype me up. That guy, no. I think the Nico, as you say, works well. You've already got a lot of your damage coming through in this area, so just being able to enable her is more your, your big opportunity. Plus, Raylis, you know that Adam is going to take some variant of AD damage in the top lane, whether it's an Aatrox, an Olaf, or an Ectin, whatever along those lines it might be. So, we'll to... that, that guy is a hype black hole. Here is BDS, because the clock is a tick, and you got the, the smolder on the opposite side, so for KC, they have the chance to just try and play through mid-jungle, keep the pressure in the bot lane, give this motor time to scale, and if BDS... It's not his fault the team sucks, though, so... Definitely. We're not going to blame Yamato, and we're not going to blame him. doesn't do that much damage. Post-6, once you have access to the ultimate and your support... If it is an aggressive support, has more levels, maybe at Ignite. You can't put down a lot of kill pressure, but KC waiting on that support pick, trying to get, get as much information as they can before they decide what they want. <sighs> All right, so we're banning Volibear, no Renekton. be able to push their advantage against Smolder early on. So we'll see. BDS, do they want to save their counter pick for Cabo? Ruru? Yeah, they are actually going to give... Unbreakable. All right, so we're gonna we're just gonna counter pick in the bot side. So they just preemptively pick Braum just in case it's like a fucking Nautilus, I guess. Oh, but surprise, it's actually R5 Olaf. I, you love to see it, guys. I fucking love these picks. I love me an R5 Olaf these days. R5 Olaf versus low mobility back, lay, uh, back lines. You know, Talia can't do shit to him. Vi can't do shit to him. He just runs through and fucking kills Jace and Talia and Smolder. Great pickup. You have huge amounts of CC, flanking CC, flanking CC. Actually, really like BDS's cop. For him and that kind of stuff, right? So I think this is where we will see a lot more attention of up. Is it KC? But if we want to bring him back in the playoffs, this is one of three wins they will need to get back to back to back. You win here, then you play a tiebreaker against SK for the right to play a tiebreaker against Rogue. Yeah, and of course it's Adam playing the Olaf too. He just gets it for free in this game, basically. He just it's free fucking real estate. I actually thought that was gonna be so massively big brain from BDS for a second. So you can see already this word that's been placed on this top side here. This is coming from the French. 
we want to make sure Olaf isn't hiding in the jungle. We want to make sure Cabal Shard is able to get some vision control on this top side so we can hop in and out of these bushes and get that wave push that he needs. And BDS in response, I thought they were going to go in just hyper aggressive in that bottom side and try and invade, believing that KC were going to go for that play on the top side. But um, I think with Nuke, one, taking the Q start rather than taking E for the follow up, and Labrov not being the one to set up for the play, BDS is going to back away instead. BDS picking off, giving Shea a bit of a leash, hoping to. All right, here we go. Of that jungle clear. I'm caught off guard. That is the first skin I have Leashing seen. for the blue. He has hair and it's throwing me off. He has a big majestic ponytail and it is messing with my brain. <laughs> yeah, we took it all off of Mirwin and gave it to Lee <laughs> That was good, Mirwin. <laughs> Box for love, Mirwin. Good on you. Had to donate. He looks great. Yeah, he does. Good with a shaved head. Upset again. Oh, God, smolder stuff. Smolder. Not good early. Scale's good. Needs to CS. Needs to hit enemy champions with ability. But in this case, if LeBron's just going to walk in and eat a bunch of free damage, you're going to feel pretty good about that one. But I think this is a really, I'm sorry to say, a cool smolder composition. Because essentially what you want to do is KC, right, is play through mid and your... Oh, hang on. Ooh, flash committed now. Q comes in from Targumus. Doesn't have level 2. Doesn't have the unbreakable upset. Not going to be too effective. But Targumus forced to flash out. Good play from LeBron on the second engage there. I love turd with wings in the bot lane. Very good, very fun champion. Very interactive design, right? Games. That's not a big win, though, for Targamus, who I might have told off because Shea with the setup, the follow was there, the knockback from taking the flash out to save the Oh, first blood for BDS. Well played by Nuke. A big win, though. Why, why doesn't everybody just uh, in all chat, like Nook should just say, Saken these nuts. After getting that one. Right, guys? I like how Saken, you know, decides, yep, gonna flash after this. I, I'm not only gonna die, I need to waste my flash too. Why don't you sake in these nuts? Starting to be alarm bells ringing, right? You've already lost Targamus' flash on that bot side. Easy setup then for Shao to try and come back into that bot lane. Am I fucked up for enjoying Casey losing since they benched my boy Yamato? No, that's why we all like it. Just gonna shove in this wave. I think Shao just there to try and support him. But really great stuff in the early game from. That's why we all love it. Right now, the winning part of the lane, or at least where they have pressure, is top lane for Cabo, but that can fade away and Axe connects if Lee Sin is there to follow up. Cabo's advantage can disappear in the blink of an eye. We know scaling is still the name of the game for the side of KC, but falling this far behind early on... <laughs> Please check out immediately. <laughs> what new terrible emote have you made now? Bo at least ahead in jungle CS for now. Not going to turn into a gold lead, though, because of the assist that Shea was able to get, but maybe he can't contest this red buff pressure. Hold on, it's not loading side. for me. Careful even being here. Good damage coming in. Relentless force there, as well as the denting blows, but now, Nuke first on the roam. Bo? Bo has to be careful. Flash out here. Good damage. In jungle CS for now. All right, so Bo actually does go in because he knows actually that he, you know, he he's level four and that, you know, basically right here, Shao just goes back up and they see him rounding the corner. They do ping him right there. And so once, once Saken gets back into the mid lane, it's very interesting that Lee Sin comes back here. Just okay, so Lee Sin's just covering the push out so Nook can go back and use TP. And so Vi clears both camps. And then instead of going to Scuttle, at, oh no, does go to Scuttle, kill Scuttle, but Shao is just so far behind because he went to Krugs first. Oh, he sees this. That's nice. That's very nice. And he drops a ward just in case Nuke tries to roam. He knows Nuke doesn't have flash, though. Shao has flash, but Shao decides to, what, go back in on this? That's well played by, by Carmine Corp, honestly. All right, I added ah the French. Ah the French. Oh, the French. 
so much damage early and Bo turning aggressive onto Shao as well here with the uh, the passive proccing. Shao has to ditch. Shao also not able to follow up on this tiny little sonic wave that goes wide. And then Bo able to finish off the kill there. Really nice stuff from Carmen Corp working off pushing waves yeah pretty bold play to be honest Shea maybe shouldn't have been there but the fact that they're able to and to say we won't get to use it now that they are out there's always next split adanian plus vitality is still technically french the end of the meantime upset fully committed to his role as a scaler as his ice double coal coming out in the bottom lane but still that's why we got to use it a lot right now ah the french on the opposite side for casey potentially something they can play around and look to leverage more getting closer to level six about to take over to level five I think you're not going to be able to do too much for Bo at the moment. I think you do want that level six, as you say, but you need to clear your top side out before you can get that. Uh, you also would like to try and play off of getting Nuke dead in that mid lane when you hit that level six, but I think the flash might just be up before you can really get that. Ten weeks until they play again? Good. Maybe maybe they can get a new mid laner. We might actually try and see him. Well, honestly, I was going to... I was going to say bot, but you already have a huge amount of pressure on bot side. And even if you try and go top, Adam just presses or and the, the gang's dead, right? It, it was good play around the top pressure that they had, though. Nice call by Bo. Very weird pathing by Sheo, though. To, like, still have his red buff up, up at that time. I guess he wanted to maximize the uptime that he would have had with red buff while he was out on the map, which is why he did the small camps first. They were already picking the grubs earlier, anticipating. They would clear top side into that option. Taken no flash from the initial play. Sonic Wave connects, but they see Bo. Don't want to overcommit here. Just continues to step in, knowing Targamus is there. Aggressive maneuver for Bo. I'm surprised BDS didn't try to turn onto the Vi, but aren't confident that they have enough damage. They didn't know where Targamus was. They just knew he'd reset, and Bo really wanted to try and get that chunk so he could play for Raptors. Most of them already gone to Shio, but okay. Ooh. If either of those skills are connected, that might have been a very different story, but luckily Shio gets hit by neither. Bo is, is still six. going in. Smite is there. Nuke is six, but Bo manages to get away. Nuke Bo's just on top of Shao because he is a level up. What? So, let's take a look at this. Okay, so Seiken has WE down. This is where you walk out because you've got like a 10 second cooldown on each of those abilities. And Nuke is six. He doesn't have flash, but he might still be able to engage upon you. He actually just misses everybody, so that's fun. Nook is actually just doesn't do shit. Oh, just trying to get some E damage down on the back line. Ugh. Say can miss both his WE combos, so they lose. But Carmine Corp should have backed off after missing the first WE, but Seiken misses them both. There he has ultimate up, which is a nice little bit of burst to kick things off and a lot of movement speed. Upset, <clears throat> excuse me, has flash, can't get away, but will opt to stay here. Ice just going to push out the wave and back off. That was a weird one, Rob. Yeah. I don't know if I want to watch it back. So if Lucian is so viable, why don't LEC play it? Because they're fucking bad at it. Because it requires a lot of team-wide coordination to play Lucian well into the mid and late game. Because you need him to be in the front of the composition doing damage, and you have to actually have a brain as a team in order to do that. Kind of a comedy of errors, to be perfectly honest. I think the only, yeah, the only nice thing for KC in that context is Nuke also kind of whiffed some spells as well. But ultimately, um... Lucian is good. It's like those episodes of Dragon Ball Z, you know, where you're like... Watch Viper play Lucian and tell me it's not good. It gives you so much map control and objective control. Targamus is in river, guys. He's here for the dragon in two minutes and 40 seconds. It doesn't matter if Smolder, you know, he's, he's, it does, you know, guys, Targamus needs to be here right now, okay? It, it doesn't matter if Smolder's recalling. It doesn't matter if he's not actually ganking mid because Saken's in base. 
doesn't matter that Vi's on Red Buff. He has to be alone in the river two and a half minutes before the Drake spawns for reasons? Reasons? Yep. He's got to be there. He's just a river man. He's just a river man with a river shield. Ice, ice, baby. Pretty far in. BDS just caught him. I have no idea what he was doing. Well, I think he just assumed that there was a recall there. I wasn't entirely sure where people were positioned on the map. I mean, but why? What, what was he accomplishing there? Let's let's pretend that his lanes are there. What the fuck is he accomplishing? Nothing still. Follow up is there. But Shayo put himself in no man's land. Recall there. I wasn't entirely sure where people were positioned on the map. And Bo, not to be outdone, guys. Not to be outdone. I think he thought Saken was going to wall in, guys. Here's what. Here's my theory. I think he thinks Saken's coming. This is the only thing that makes sense about this. So he actually, he actually dodges. He actually do he uses he uses his ult to dodge Pop Blossom. But Saken doesn't know how to press R. But Shayo put himself in no man's land. It will not matter. However, BDS still so far ahead in the play. Casey's season starting to fall. Apart. Oh! For BDS, three kills ahead. I have no idea what he was doing. Uh, do you think G2's last losses could be a worrisome sign? No. I think G2's still really good. Yeah, I know. Jargum is completely overextended into River. And then when he dies, Bo goes, do you know what? That looked like a great idea. Now Targamus goes, let me show you how it's really done, mate. And yeah. then goes in again for the Dude, and dudes. My dudes. My dudes. Targamus. You know the Lee Sin was just here. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. So B Carmine Corp, okay? All right. So you're gonna head back down. Now you know Scuttle Crab is up. Shayo's right here. Do you guys think that Shayo's going to walk to Scuttle Crab to take it? And if he walks to Scuttle Crab, why would we walk into River where we know Shayo is, who's now full HP from like fucking taking Scuttle Crab? Okay, so he's at Scuttle Crab. Very fucking obviously at Scuttle Crab. Nothing here really seems to make sense for KC or trying to achieve. You know, Targum is completely overextended into River. And then when he dies, Bo goes, do you know what? So then Targamas is like, but I am a man of the river. My feet must be wet in the, the lapping waves of Summoner's Rift. Jesus fucking Christ. What is Targamas doing? This is difficult, I think it is safe to say. And while the KC fans remain endlessly passionate, Endlessly supportive. Um, you know, right now it is not panning out for the KC lineup as they get further behind. Bo, now here to clear the vision. And this is a, it's a. He's, it, Bo actually yeah. goes into this tri brush to clear the vision so Targamas won't be a man of the river again. He's like, okay, Targamas, you have no reason to walk there now. I fixed your problem for you. You know, you really want in these final games for, for support jungle to be working well. And while Targamus and Bo have often been in the same place, the plays have not really been working out. Yeah, they've been in the same place, just opposite times. Yeah. You know, it's that's the big problem is that they both died in River, but they weren't there at the same time. They were there together at Raptors. They just... In spirit. They were also united in... This Targamus is a man of the river. I mean, he is drawn to the water. Like, at this point, if Casey win, you Here he comes. There's momentum on your side. Yes, you have to win two Once again, that little sliver of hope becoming moist in the center of the rift. You make mistakes when top lane, which has been doing well, is about to get completely deleted. Hope starts to fade away. Adam grabbing a kill, leveraging the power of that Ragnarok Shale already on the second spawn. Of He's in the river again, guys. In the bottom lane, taking place, making sure that upset cannot farm comfortably. This is just gone from bad to worse for KC. Here comes mom. But, uh, Saken? On the way down, trying to knock up ice, knock back... Okay, flashes W. Oh, I get him. Shut down there for Saken. 
the start of something for KC. Aha, the river, the river travels have paid off for Targamas. He's been in the North River. He's been in the South River. He's been in all the rivers of the world. He's a minion, but I don't know what else he can do. All right. He has drunk deep of their clean waters. And now he is here to walk away and watch his friend die. Something at least small for the side of KC. The shutdown was good. But, I mean, look at the bottom of your screen. It's all red. It's all in favor of BDS. And the bottom lane is getting harder. Yes, Smolder has a hidden, not so hidden scaling component of the stacks. And you can see on his picture, if you look real close, 76 at this moment in time. Not terrible, but not great. Upset's gonna need to Doesn't matter. Got that Drake eventually, guys. We had to sacrifice many men into the river, to the river gods, yeah, in order to achieve to the Drake, but we did it. Right? We've seen no linking up between mid jungle. Uh, upset, he hasn't really gotten to a position where he's really scaled to a point where he's threatening. And BDS, they've already started. Like, dragons are going in their favor. I'm oh, sorry. Well, they've started to get the dragons back in underway. They'd be able to play for that at the 25 minute mark, which is maybe where Smolder might have a chance to try and do something. But realistically, I think Upset a little bit too far behind at this stage. Um, and then when you look towards the. Oh, sorry, well, not Upset specifically, but KC a little bit too far behind. And they really want to try and play it through side lanes, right? The whole point is Cabo should have a lead in top. Saken and Bo should have been able to get a lead in mid, but they're behind. You can't play outside lanes from this position, and it means that now BDS just get to play for a superior team fight. And the angle that they have, BDS slowly pushing their vision line forward. Luckily for Casey, they have yeah. a breakdown. Yeah, I don't think Upset is going to survive long against a ulting, ghosting, flashing Adam Olaf in these team fights. This will just a little quick kick. Adam wants the kill. Oh. <laughs> it belongs to Sheo. Yeah, I just feel bad for If Casey Org offered you a one year, one million contract to coach Casey for two splits, is it fully guaranteed? Because it's fully guaranteed, I absolutely take that deal. That job is free right now. You I couldn't possibly do worse. Right? Any improvement would be credited to me, and I get a million dollars guaranteed. It's fucking free. I wouldn't be blamed if they if they continued this level of performance because now everybody knows it's not the coaches. It's fucking free. Monty is not French. He can't take the job. Ah, but I can I can speak conversational French, guys. The problem is I know enough French to be dangerous. And there was no response. You can see the bow was just sitting in that bot side uh, map. What if this KC year makes you think winning games is what would cause you to retain or lose your job? Uh, yeah, but that's the thing. If it's guaranteed money, the worst thing that happens is they fire me and I get the money. So I don't care. Maybe with Labrov and Reset, they can pick this up, but this is going to be a really tight time. Shao clearing out the Raptor camp. We'll likely check this. <laughs> Coach for the cameras. Yep. Dude, the smaller. content would be fire. The vision and Olaf has reset. Adam with no TP means man advantage for KC, and it looks like BDS might just give this one up. Upset on the way as well. Meanwhile, Nico split pushing in bottom lane. And uh, Labrov all the way on the bottom side of the map. Maybe once again trying to catch out Cabo as he goes for the wave. Targamas is a, uh, is in the river again. Something I don't think that really BDS had to give up. No, I think they could have been in a better position for it, especially if Adam had actually got the top tower or positioned himself for the top tower. But now you're going to have Shao try and match here. The uh, the uh, first what's the name of that first time? I'm saying guard breaker because I'm playing too much TFT. Stride breaker. Stride breaker. Thank there you. you. <laughs> Completed for Adam. So if he gets onto thing. any of these side laners, if you have to chase them down with the slow and that ghost as well, so he becomes significantly more threatening in that position. And with BDS getting first tower as well, we know the Adam Classic got pushed top, is immediately group onto mid wave and see if you can make something happen. It's going to be up in full force as well. Although I think he is just going to reset and actually swap with. All right, Hextech Soul. If they get Hextech Soul, if BDS gets Hextech Soul, it's like so giga over. Because the procs on Hextech Soul are going to make it even easier for Olaf to kill their back line. Starts to look hopeless. Upset. I think it's had a really solid season individually, but in this game, you know, opting for the smolder. 
The potential of what it could bring is there, but might not have the time to scale up. Darhouse is in the river again, guys. He just has to watch, just has to wave clear as the rest he, of the He hates levels. Why does Saken have uh, Merc treads? Uh, he's afraid because he gets constantly rooted by Nico. Targamas! He's wet again. He's damp. He's in the river. He's walking up. That Olaf has ghost and ult. Why is he flashing? Why is he flashing? In what universe? In what universe after you see this? I guess he sees he sees the wall, so he wants to get on the other side of it, but Olaf just walks through it because he has ghost and he's ulting. Uh-huh. 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 And Bo's dead. Uh-huh. Ah! Ah, the French. It was second dragon for BDS. So Casey were like, okay, we have Rift Herald. Let's try and use a topside. Get some gold back in our favor here. Something for our solo laners. But BDS just say, cool. We don't mind leaving dragon at this stage. We get the turnaround play on topside. And we can still go for dragon anyway. And that's why once they saw Shale here, they're like, oh, crap. We know exactly what BDS are about to do. Great flash from Adam over the wall. Shale lands that sonic wave as well, which then sets up nicely to try and follow through. Shale unfortunate there. Could have gotten Saken, but nice flash from Saken to match the kick flash from Shale. But BDS still come out massively on top. And you can see frustration on the face of the KC coaching staff. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of counterplay when an Olaf is this strong. Even when you're moving in as support jungle, it's textbook. It's how you're supposed yeah, to Yeah, coach, do it. why'd you let them R5 Olaf? It seems like that's something that many teams would do these days, but especially BDS. But that's the thing, right? I think when we came into this game, we are like, cool, how is Bo going to look in the Vi? What's he going to be able to do? Because realistically, it had to be play for lanes, but it was more lanes playing for Bo. And without him able to capitalize on new having no summoner spells available. That Rock. Should be able to back away, yeah. No. And, not, and also then not being able to get that vision or the push control for Cabal Shard in the top side. BDS were just able to put it... might as well go all in and fire this coach too and keep the, the same roster again. I hope he does. That's my that's my fantasy. <laughs> Why is Yamato forcing Targamas to play like this? Yeah, I know. Why is he mind controlling him? It's so weird. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, he's not? <laughs> Flash in the last play over the wall. Just managed to ghost pass. I thought I saw him use it too, but he still had it, so obviously did not. It's just that you what, bro? You what, bro? You said, huh? It's just a second you see the flick back. He's, I mean, he's just, he's already made playoffs. He's still just coming in. He, he doesn't, he doesn't overcommit. Just ridiculous. keeps for the pressure instead. SK Sad. The scene somewhere right now, gearing up for a tiebreaker, just going, oh, thank God for Admiral Rock. <laughs> Remember, uh, just procs the seraphs and leaves. It's been two splits now where we get to see some improvement, but it's clear that this is not No, you didn't see any improvement. What the fuck are you talking about, Dagda? What improvement did you see? How are they better? They're not. They're exactly the same. Well, and I think that, again, when you look closely, you can see signs of that improvement, but when you look at the scoreboard, you can't. It's exactly the same as it was in winter, of course. In that context, they were down and they won the last two. Don't worry, guys. Upsets at 150 stacks by 25 minutes. He will be at 225. He's using his Q. He's, he's getting the five stacks. Oh, no, he's not. Lasered. Lasered. He got three stacks instead. Just a sad, just a sad herald. Mini clouds. This split has been smolder, and in a lot of our games, especially in the first week before the hot fix, uh, yeah, it was just an inevitable win. Oh, he teleported. The herald runs past Adam. <laughs> and 
will charge. He's not worried about it. He wants to wave instead. Potential play on the top side here. Targivus, Shadow, and Cabo. Bo there as well. Just trying to push this wave in. Tangle bar. Does he have numbers? Deleted. Ball breaker forward. Now going to go into the new, but he's on the wrong side of the wall. Flick back is good, though. Finally, the CC layered. It looks like a good start to things, but Ice ulting, and now he's... Ah, uh, yes. It's time for the dive. Ball breaker forward. Now gonna... Yep. It's time for the dive. Here the comes Saken. They're going to just get the Vi to Leah combo down onto Nook. Nook dies before ulting, but they're so deep that Ice is just able to use Ghost and get into this fight. Mom up and available. When is it going to get called in? Ice skating forward. Do they want to step up? Are they happy with what they have so far? Sonic Wave connects. Resonating Strike. Here we go. She has no kick. Whoops. All right. We went too far. Adam Lilly just runs all the way here because he has no TP. He's got to use Ghost now. Oh, got him. They tried to get out just before the frat bro showed up, but unfortunately for Cabo Shard, he got caught right as he was about to leave. Nobody wants to get caught in that conversation, but KC... <laughs> Why don't you get the peak and get on out of there? You don't understand, man. His dad owns the dealership, and that is his entire personality. <laughs> Yo, bro, I like I the time share. Like that that's the, the angle <laughs> for bro, your bro -lap. But hey, like, you can see here, right? O Olaf, or bro -lap re uh, setting in the bot side, trying to get up to the top side. Kick flashed away from, from Bo. Could have been really nice from Shale, but they do get the bot side, trying to get up to the top. But hey, like, you can see here, right? O Olaf, or bro -lap re uh, setting in the bot side, trying to get Get up to the top side. Kick flashed away from from Bo. Actually, was a nice flash by Bo on the kick. And BDS are trying to buy time where Adam can actually get back into this yeah. fight. But KC, they're actually have to poke and prod as they start to move forward, and that's kind of what they do great with Saken and Cabo Shard here. When the all out comes through with Abrov, just able to flash away from Saken, get the kill onto Labrov, and now the ghost comes through from Adam. Yeah. And they've got enough burst damage to finish him off. Cabo's like, I got to get out, man. He said something about cryptocurrency and Web three. This is not a conversation I want to participate in. Yeah, tried to make him look at his portfolio, but I, honestly, I think Cabo Shard, the really, I think it was a good call. The only way you get people out is if you split. Otherwise, Adam chases you all down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, we're not going for Drake. We're setting traps in the brush. Always grinding. Passive income. He's been awake since 3 a.m. Yeah, that's the secret. Oh, that's a surprise, Olaf. That's not the bush you wanted to go into, but we'll die. Ice on a rampage. Not much you can do there after you queue in, because the Olaf has ult, so you can't ult him, so he just sticks to you and kills you. You you don't think that he's in there because you think they're taking Drake for Soul Point. They let him into his zone, Rob. That's the one rule. Don't let him into his zone. And now they're in the burn zone. And BDS going to be very, very happy about this. Still, a lot of members of KC trying to collapse here. Shale is not here. Just to be very clear, no jungler in the vicinity, and we're still going They're looking for a turn. From behind. KC, see a Nook is a not at all suspicious melee minion. There, but maybe they can find an angle into the there we go. It's free. No, don't go. Just leave, BDS. Just leave, just leave, just leave. You got Targamas' ult. Just leave. Very good. No throws. Very strong in his own regard as well. And this is the thing I think upset the timer. They just ticked on that little bit too long. Casey need to find ways to get picked. 200 right now. Yeah, it's going to take him probably another minute to get all those stacks. He'll have it for the soul fight, but the edge is absolutely enormous. Adam, as big as he is, it becomes very easy for him again to just chase down people. That's why, like, him just showing up here is causing issues already. All right. TP onto the bottom side. Another pick onto Bo. If it first is again to just chase down people, that's why like him just showing up here, maybe you can then unlock Saken to a slight bit. Bo forgets that it's Hextech Rift. Adam, as big as he is, it becomes very easy for him again to just chase. So they actually just set up the play because they see him. 
Hex flash over the wall. And we just TP. They don't even use the portal. Still an extra bad idea because it's Hex Tech Rift. Because you absolutely could have seen a Hex Tech Rift play right there. For the flank. All right, here we go. Upset at 225. He did it. It's an 8K gold deficit. It's all coming down to the Hextech Soul fight. It doesn't matter that he hit 225 because Olaf is just going to one-shot him. Ten weeks. Get fucked. Get out. Okay, here we go. Push it here, and then look to establish all this vision in this quadrant, and then you can just play for um, your position on towards those terrors. Although with dragon and fifty. No, no, Dagda. They're just gonna go for soul. Yeah. Instead, but it's the same idea, right? Is just continue this push, keep yourself in check, and Adam, yeah, he's gonna reset as well. So it is gonna be the dragon fight coming through here for Soul, and for Casey, entering to bot side is always so risky because if you lose the fight, Ice is already shoving in mid, and it makes it so hard to actually try and contest. And even if you know BDS give up, dragon all right, here we go. The moment of truth for Carving Corp. Everything on the line. Upset. Cool. It's, it's 225 it's stacks. Whereas they just crack your base. It's so hard for KC to find a How do you protect him in the back line against Adams Olaf? Adams here. They see him on the flank. Here we go. There's no turret there. He used his stride breaker to clear the wave. Oh my god, he's gonna get nope. They decide not to cue him. That's probably smart. He's level 16. He's super scary. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Adam on the flank. They're going to see it, but it doesn't matter if they see it. Nuke is a wolf. Adam, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, it doesn't matter because upset doesn't do anything. Upset's like, I'm out. I'm out. Well, that's the end of the game. Not gonna go home empty -handed. At least they got the Drake though, right guys? It's actually hilarious. So they do actually use the hex gate. Is Adam upsets like over? He's like, okay, oh, I'll just kill everybody else then. Cabochard and Saken are right here. It's free. 
Good job, Shayo. Will find themselves going home exactly that. Nothing to pick up as BDS will trump them in their place and deny them. Yeah, upset had to E the wall there, otherwise he was dead. Guys, I there's no good there's nothing good about like basically right here, they actually just don't have anybody who is watching the flank. So when Adam Adam and Nook come in, like Bo does the right thing. Now upset retreat. But upset actually has to e the wall. But it, this is a factor of them being super far behind, guys. I mean, what are they supposed to do? What is upset supposed to do? If he stays, he dies. Trying to see if he can move into position here. Adam Adam's over the wall. They recognize the wolf now. Upset retreating. The Drake taken. No one objective bounty. They even got ice trapped behind this wall, guys. They even got ice trapped behind this wall. They're too far ahead. You know, they prevented the Nico flank. They trapped ice behind the wall. What are you supposed to do? Trying to see if he can move into position here. Adam's Adam over spotted. the wall. They recognize the wolf now. Upset retreating. The Drake taken. No one objective bounty. Cow manages to take the Drake. And now there's an Olaf trying to tear his way through the backside. The execute is enough. Upset cannot get into the fight. He needs to flap onto somebody. He needs to their, do their comp is actually just shit, guys, at this point in the game with this kind of. With, you know, when. If they're playing into you and you can actually poke with Jace or get hit cues with Smolder. But if you're trying to move in to take an objective, the the engage is way too good. I mean, like we said beforehand, like Rel, Nico, Lee Sin, and then a ghosting, ulting Olaf, you can't protect the back line. This composition is very good. I mean, really the answer here, guys, is not about how upset played. It's the fact that we got to see a fucking R5 Olaf just absolutely dominate. Like, the real problem was the draft. Right? The real problem was the draft. But, terrible, terrible game. Ah, the French. Yeah, first pick Vi. First pick Vi. I mean, look at this draft. It's just fucking so bad. The R5 Olaf, I mean, it's Adam, like, dude, you, you blind the Braum, but there were so many mistakes in this game. Olaf was huge. Remember, Ice, who was mega fed on Zeri, wasn't even part of that fight. Yeah, Yamato was the problem. All right, guys, I think that's enough for me for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll probably be back with some LPL because we're, we're rounding out the LPL season. So the last games of LPL are coming in the next couple of days. So, you know, over the next couple of days, we will do top versus NIP. Might go back and do a little bit of FPX. We'll see. We'll see. And we wait for more LCS and LCK this weekend. So thanks for watching. Follow the channel. Subscribe to my YouTube. Thank you very much. See you later.